It's the anxiety of the unknown, isn't it? It's kind of like yeah. we've, got, we've kind of everybody's got settled in to, to lockdown. And now, because yeah, it was like I say, it was tough at the beginning. It was hard to kind of get used to. And now everybody's kind of sort of in it, you know, we've like, well, this right. is life. And now, like, oh, hang on, the parameters change again. Yeah. What is the, and then we've got to enter back into the world. And what That's is the, right. new, the new norm? What is it going to look like? Um, the website's looking sick. You know, the content's looking amazing. It looks fabulous. Um, yeah, thank congratulations. You. It looks great. I think we've been, t- and it's always, as I say, it's always been there in different forms in years. But I think this is the best, the best crew I've had working on it. It's amazing. I love it. In two to three weeks, the guys have like really ramped up the content. It's really, I think, very intellectual, very informative. Um, we're always about pushing for trends. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you is because I'm really passionate about trying to keep hairdressers cool for a better word. I don't really like the word cool, but I don't really, don't really know an alternative to express yeah. it. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of, sometimes hairdressing can be a bit too hairdressery and and I think they just need different points of contact and education and, and information. So I wanted to create Crowsness as a platform to deliver that. I think you'll know as well, you know, doing what we do is that when you have somebody like an assistant starts to join you and they're very young and they come from a hairdressing salon or that kind of background as opposed to being on, the, on, on this side of the fence, I think it's that whole learning curve and seeing to try and de-hairdress them a little bit to try and take away some of the, the sort of the polished, um, the kind of sort of, you know, hair that is expected. And, and, I, and I'm doing this, I'm trying to do a very similar thing with our brand, Anti. It's like I'm really pushing that it's about trying to look at what people really want to look like. And are we sure as hairdressers? I mean, it, and this is not saying that, not, and I've said this many, many times. I've got to be careful. I don't get myself into hot water because I don't. It's not about offending people, but it's about a personal, a personal view on it. And I, I, but I'm passionate, and I and I'll I'll say how I, you know I'll always be honest about when, yeah about how I feel. But I think that sometimes when a client say comes to the salon, we get a little bit. We have a, a sort of a repertoire of work that or haircuts or colors or finishing that we do on everybody and it's, it becomes very formulated and I think if you really when I turn up on a, on, a, on a shoot for instance if I use that mentality like I do when I do I say a client I know a space in Brixton or, or whatever it might be and they come in and I treat them for the sort of character and the person and look at all the little sort of nuances that I think is going to work for them then I can give them something which I think is really personal to them and is about them and not just about a hairstyle, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I think, I think you know, anybody who's trying to sort of bring those two worlds together, it is fun, it's fantastic because I think it's getting better. I think it's a lot more, there's definitely a, a sort of a, a great sort of visual understanding of it when you go and say judge the hair awards and things like that and you see what people are, are doing. Um, and let's face it, not everybody wants to see a bloody ponytail like they do at a fashion show or a, you know, and sometimes a simple little nuance like a, a hairline that's wet or a, mm. things that might turn me and you on behind the camera, a hairdresser's gonna look at it and go, what's that? That's, that's <laughs> not hairdressing. So. It, it's, it's very... It works um, both ways, doesn't it? Yeah, of course it does. And absolutely. And, and, and I think, you know, that's why, you know, we've been, we've been sort of creating this sort of education on what we're doing and, and sort of saying, look, you know, not to say we're going to do session work in the salon. It's, it's about how do we combine elements of things that you take from that world and the way that you process yeah. and look at hair and look at, what it's doing to the character of the person and, and you know, I just, and taking things into consideration and trying to find out the right type of information as a hairdresser from them. And like I would do if I was working with a fashion designer and trying to find out about their collection, whether I'd be working with a brand on a shoot, whether it would be a fashion brand or even a, you know, whatever type of brand, just trying to find out what the, what the, aesthetic is and what what they're trying to push as a as as an idea so i think it's the sort of knowledge in in that world that we're trying to expose a bit more 
So that's why I love what you're saying. I think it's brilliant. So that's it. The information is out there. Of course it is. But what our skill is, is curating that, packaging it up so that you can come to us and know that that information you're getting is trusted to be, you know, current, top, trendy, yeah. festival, whatever words you kind of want to put to it, you kind of know this is a go-to place. That's right. right. You say there are a few other people's doing it, but also one of the niches that we have is we're not aligned. You know, you can go to some of the big brands and you can get their trend reports or you can get their latest techniques. But I can tell you, they're always going to be driven by what they're trying to sell you. And I really want us to focus on the story. Like you touched on it there. We go to designers and then we ask about the collection and then we produce hair that's related to that collection. So what's the story behind the collection? How does the hair relate to the fashion? And it's getting people to understand that that ponytail or that wet, wet look hairline, it has a story behind it. It has a reason for it being there. And there's a whole relation to it. And I want crow's nest. And I always push my guys. I'm like, you've got to find out who did it, how they did it, but more importantly, why they did it. What's the story yeah. about it? And that's the information that we want to push to people. We, we also go through that when you're on set. I think you have to, or certainly, you know, a lot of the shoots I do. I mean, I'm lucky I, I sort of only work with a handful of photographers, but, you know, if I'm working on an ad campaign or, a, or, or even just a really cool editorial that we're sort of working on, I will get a creative set to me or I'll be part of making the creative process yeah. and pulling tear sheets and, and doing all the research like I, I have to do. Or it's a treatment, which is a document, which is 30 pages, as you know, and then you have yeah. to study it like it's a manual. And you have to get, and within that 30 pages, you've got to think, right, what's the, what are they trying to sell? Who's the demographic? It's, and so it's way beyond hair. And I think this yeah. is what a lot of people out there, hairdressers some, that maybe don't do what we do, look at it and go, well, you know, they just turn up and blow, they, Nick just put the brush through the hair today or he put a bit of wax in it or he's, he's yeah. he just wet the hair down. And like you say, there's, they don't get that, that there's, there's a whole story yeah. which has led you to that point to get to, get to where you're at. So, and, I, and I think also it's that thing as well, Jason, where you, and again, you know, I'm fortunate, I've got a really good friend of mine who's a I've got, you know, brilliant makeup artist and we talk, I mean, pretty much every day and if I'm working with, say, him on a beauty story or he's got an idea for, like, a, an amazing makeup thing he wants to do, sometimes it's about taking a complete backseat as a hairstylist and doing something super, super simple where it's, it doesn't even look like the hair's been touched, which you know as well as I do is tricky. Yeah. To get that right. That's, that's one of the hardest things. The other thing is also knowing if you are going to go in there and create mental wigs and really go conceptual with it does it is it going to work in terms of still having that factor that is like you said at the beginning which is cool cool is not a bad word cool is a good word to describe because everybody instantly yeah. has some kind of aesthetic what cool means but is it going to be overkill is it going to be are you overcooking it is it is it too you know is it too drag queeny is it too you know to push the other way and I think there's all those things that run through your mind, um, which, which make you, which create insecurity. You know, it, it's part of what yeah. we do. So you're, um, but you also said the anti collective. Is it, I say anti, you said anti. Uh, well, we say anti because it, it, it sort of started in, it, it, they don't say anti in America, and even it's, okay. they say anti. Because okay. basically, oh, so it's an American the founder, so I'll tell you a little, a little bit of history on it. Dude. The founder, Frank, he actually was Australian initially. He's an Australian-Italian um, guy who's got salons. And he, we, we were great friends. We became friends through when I was still part of the TG, uh, you know, part of that part of my career. Um, and he had salons and we met. And then he, some of his team used to come and work with me, some work on my team. At, and when I used to do New York Fashion Week, he opened the salon there. And he had some really great talent. One of them now was actually um, Dale, who who is now is with Duffy, and he's a, he's a brilliant hairstylist. Works with Paddy, who's a really good friend of mine, who um, and uh, works on that team. And and um, but anyway, so yeah, Frank, he he had he always had this sort of idea of starting a product line, and, and I was sort of considering doing something, and then I wasn't, and it was sort of and it was always in the back of my mind, and then. 
we sort of came together and, and we kept it a, a real secret for a while. We, I was testing product um, and, you know, we were slowly sort of working out. But he, he's, a, he's a bit of a powerhouse. He was like, a, you know, he was working away behind the scenes and doing stuff. And, um, and anyway, so the, the product line, we, it was kind of, you know, really condensed, small set of products. Um, a little bit of a sort of, and not just, I mean, because I, I work with big brands and I, I, I love what everybody does. There's room for all of us. Um, but I think some of the things that you maybe, some of the hairdressers don't necessarily want from that world, you can get with us and vice versa. And it's a bit like what you yeah. started the conversation with today is about, for us, the aesthetic behind us and the, and the kind of philosophy is about ownership and about giving the power to the hair, hairdresser, giving them the, the sort of, giving them the reins again and not, not to be too dictated by the product brand that they're representing. And what I mean by that is absolutely, we need all the big brands. I don't want to say anything that's going to damage my relationship with anybody because it's not about that. But I think we just saw, we had a passion and a drive to create something which was unique and a bit different. And that we could, do, when we do creative, um, whether it be our campaign or ideas or concepts, that it, it's completely us doing it. It's not somebody saying, it's got to look like this because we want to sell X yeah. amount of product. Or it's got the color, we, we're pushing this color this month. Or it's all driven from the right place, if that makes sense. Um, so I suppose it's a bit of a labor of love in that sense. And, it, and, it, and, it's, and it's, it's, it's tricky because you, you know, like anything, it, and people get a little, little bit nervous when they, they see something new for the first time and they kind of, it's a new concept. And it's like, well, because I, I, we all, like you said, we're, we're all, hairdressers all want to be cool and they all want to be trendy and they all think they're on point. But when you get in front of some people and they, it's, it's, it's even me, I question things and I think, oh my God, you know, somebody like Eugene going to like what I've done. You, you can't <laughs> help it. No, I get yeah. people sending me messages going, Nick, I'm doing this, I'm doing this thing. What, do you, is this cool enough? And so we all go through it. So the, the reason I'm saying that is that I think with other brands, you put a different hat on and you have to go in there and create hair, which they want you to do, which is who you are creatively. Of course it is. But you've still got to, you've got to tick that box for them. Yeah. With us, it, it's, it's not about that. We, we have, it's kind of like what we feel is, is pushing the envelope and is a bit unique and, and it's, it's not just a hairstyle in a box. I think that's the other thing, Jason, is that we've tried to, I don't know if you've seen the new stuff that we've just completed that we did shot in New York. We shot, yeah. it, we shot it last September in New York and, and we were there for Fashion Week. Loved and, it, and, loved it. Yeah, and it was, well, thank you. And, I, and I'm really proud, we're really proud of it. It was street cast, it was cast through a, a girl that works for Frank called Cheeky. Um, who's got ton, a ton of followers on Instagram. She's really cool. She's a brilliant hairdresser. She's actually Charlie Lamindu's first assistant. So she just has this amazing group of young, super inspiring, like beautiful kids that are sort of like so talented. They're in the arts. They, and, and they really embrace what is out, what is going on. I've never been so inspired when I met them. It was yeah. amazing. So we literally wanted to create everything around who they were as people and not just make it a hairstyle. In fact, it's not even about the hair, if you want the honest truth. I mean, the fact that I might have put my hands in their hair or, or we've used a little bit of product, but to, they turned up looking like they did and we, we just captured it and we filmed them and we interviewed them. And it's those types of things that I, as I get to the stage I am in my career that I want to, they, they're the things that we, I want to push forward. I want to, I want to make the world realize that these people out there have got it. There's a microphone for them if they come and do stuff with us, that they're not going to be exploited, that they're not going to be, you know, it's not just a brand thing as such as what, what a lot of the other guys would do. So, so there's, a, there's a moral compass within it all. Um, and, and that's super important to us. That's like really, really important. And, it, you know, and it, it can get you into hot water a bit with some people because not everybody agrees with me. And I, and I, and I, and I love that. I love, the, I love it when yeah. somebody doesn't, if somebody doesn't like what I'm doing, it, it's, it's great. At least it's created some kind of, um, you know, reaction, I suppose.